share my experiences with you all. My journey has been uh, a very, a very uh, uh, long journey from CIT to ISE Bangalore. And as, as already mentioned, Sir has, that he described, I joined my diploma course in the year 2008 in computer science and engineering. And then after three years, I moved to uh, electronics and communication in my graduation. And as soon as I completed my graduation, I went for master's. And during my journey, I see I am, I am one of the second batch student of uh, uh, CIT Kokrajar, and wherein like not even a single building was constructed during my time. So we were housed in one of the rented school, wherein our hostel was resided in KV, uh, KV school in CIT, uh, Kokrajar town. And then after two years or three years, the campus started uh, building infrastructure and then we started taking class to the campus. And as soon as after this, uh, slowly, slowly and rapidly, the institute came into formation and the main campus was shifted to Balaga where the beautiful campus is right now being built. And and being, uh, being a proud alumni of CIT Kurajar, I really feel proud that I'm here to speak to you once again and encourage the youths that are uh, coming forward or are striving forward to take challenges in life or to be successful in life. In this discussion, I would like to briefly go through my profile as already have been discussed by Sir himself. So I will not discuss much on my profile, but first of all, I'd like to discuss the experiences in CIT and ISC Bangalore in a very short and a brief, brief one. And I'm sorry if the sounds of my background music goes to your ear because right now I'm traveling by train to Guwahati and Due to earthquake, uh, there was a delay in the train and the train was stopped midway. So I, had, I was halted for at least two and a half hours in a midway. So please bear with me. So basically, CIT was the first institute that was established in the region. And I had no clue when I passed out my uh, uh, mat matriculation. So I didn't know what will happen if I join CIT Kukrajar. So just like you all, maybe some of you might not have any idea when you join CIT Kukrajar. So it was the same situation for me as well, wherein I joined CIT Kukrajar without any uh, future knowledge or what will happen after joining to CIT Kukrajar. As soon as I joined after matriculation, I realized that the engineering life, uh, uh, a lot of young professors came into picture and started teaching us, for example, Pranav sir, Bihung sir, Zedi sir, wherein like they were the, the, the earliest faculties in the, in the CIT Kokrajar. So based on their young experience and we, after as soon as passing out from matriculation, we could experience a different environment in CIT and a lot of enthusiasm was there between seniors and juniors and being the second page and we were very active in almost all the uh, all the activities of the institute. So I d completed my diploma, and then after that, I moved to the same institute uh, for graduation. And during the course of my graduation, I met a lot of people from senior, juniors, and uh, there were a lot of people coming from all across the India to join even CIT Kokrajar. And to be frank. CIT was just developing that during that period and it was far better than the other institutes in the region. So moving forward, CIT has given me a lot of opportunities and platform to learn. Frankly speaking, there was, there was a close interaction between faculties and students in our time. And we used to share whatever problems we faced with the faculties and faculties used to come forward and solve and resolve and provide us solutions. And this, uh, uh, this environment and this platform continued and I'm still in touch with almost all the professors of CIT Kokrajar. So, and I, 
I believe even the juniors are doing the same. And you know that CIT is one of the government funded institute and it's far better than the, any other institutes in the region. And to be frank, like uh, if you compare with private institutes based on, ex ba based on my experience and based on my knowledge, CIT Kokrajar being the MHRD funded institute stands at par with them with any other government colleges, government uh, engineering colleges in Assam. Or apply for a job, or institute, government, or private, and would apply the government institute, since it is a centrally funded institute. And this is my real experience. So whenever you go somewhere else or for an interview, they will ask you, where did you study your BTEC or that CIT Kokrajar, which is centrally funded institute by MHRD? Then, oh, that's a central institute. Then you'll realize that the importance of Kokrajar. I'm not sure that the, the students of CIT are capable enough. The only thing that you need to do is to get a right platform guidance. I believe you'll do much, much far better than what I have done. So I had no clue where to go, where not to go. Then, can you hear me, please? Yes, Pinos, go ahead. And Hello, uh, sir? if you are, yeah, okay, okay. What, you, can, you can do one thing, Pinos. Uh, maybe you can mute your video so yes, that sir. you know we can get better network. Okay, okay, oh, yes, yes, sure. Yeah. I don't know where is. I'm sorry for this. Okay, no issues. Uh, you go to your this thing, uh, meet it and uh, mute the video yes, yes, yes. i got it i got it yeah okay, yes yes, yeah. yes now you okay. you go okay, back okay. to your slide and then start go back to your slide okay 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 so i believe uh, students of cit kokrajar will take this and forward to yes. be one of the prominent pers per personality in society and prom in academics or be it in corporate or be it in politics or be it in any 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 areas so you all have a capability like me uh, like my many friends of mine who has graduated from CIT has universities in Canada or be it in France or be it in uh, US so this is the real example of how CITians can make a difference in any part of and there are many friends who have even joined government uh, government uh, uh, jobs in railways, banks, in Ministry of Travel, Ministry of Social Welfare and Justice, Ministry of Home Affairs, and many other government institutions. And in private as well, there are many of my seniors and my friends who have joined uh, in very good positions. And I'm sure that the students of CIT Kokrajar will will in articulate the same way the seniors have gone through and strive forward. And one thing I can determination, hard work, and perseverance are the three key important perspectives wherein a successful human, a success, a success comes into picture. Are the three important parameters wherein like your success is uh, guaranteed. If you follow these three tenets, Moving forward, after my graduation, I did my master's in the University of Hyderabad, which was a turning point for me because I was not so engrossed with the outside world. To mention, I would request the CIT and CIT students to explore other places. After you move out from CIT, you should explore other places like other parts of India, be it uh, north or south or uh, east. So because this will give you a lot of exposure and your learnings will be much, much, much better 
when you are confined to one location. So I request the juniors to explore places, move outside, and think beyond IITs. Don't only think, do not only think about IITs, but you should think beyond IITs and NITs, and that will lead you to any any part of the world. Be it in Germany, be it in uh, France, or be it in Canada. There are many such examples wherein, like uh, students from CIT, has uh, been successful in going abroad and uh, working in corporate sector or government sector. I will not speak much about IIC Bangalore because IIC Bangalore is one of the uh, premier institute of the country, and being a part of this institution is a real privilege, and you will experience a real joy of being a researcher in IIC Bangalore and it is one of the top and world based research institution in the in the world uh, in terms of research it has created a lot of impact uh, be it in a uh, bit in terms of biological research be it in terms of physical research or be it in terms of uh, uh, management research or in terms of independent research so I would say when you compare with IITs and IIC, I would say apple and an orange. I will tell IIC is an apple and uh, IITs is an orange. Why? Because it has different qualities. IIC too has a different quality. IITs too have a different quality. But in terms of research, IIC stands out than IITs. And in terms of uh, in terms of exposure, in terms of interna international collaboration, or in terms of publications. I assistance far ahead to be frank and this is this is the real experience that I gained because I left IIT and joined IIC and after my masters I worked in one of the private company by name Tech Mahindra I think some of the students of your institute as, of CIT Kokrazar also has joined uh, Tech Mahindra so I work just to get an experience the feel of working in a private sector so after experience of one year and two months I decided to move forward in academics and uh, take my career forward and during my uh, PhD journey I could get a lot of scholarships to visit Germany and Japan and some of the European countries and as I have already mentioned ISC provides you a lot of exposure in terms of international collaboration or research in terms of visiting labs in foreign countries, be it in US or Europe or Asian countries. So this uh, this uh, profile was, uh, this uh, visiting scientist profile was fully funded by the uh, DARD funding, which is the topmost funding agency of Germany and Japan in terms of uh, Japanese Science Society, wherein I got an opportunity to spend some time in uh, uh, with one of the professor in geo cluster in Germany wherein I got to learn the process of uh, experimentation process of exploratory research in terms of uh, uh, handling different research papers in terms of handling uh, collaborating with different scientists and the environment and the facilities so this was one of the turning point of my life wherein like being uh, being uh, graduated from one of the in, uh, new institute by name CIT Kokrazar that I could reach in Germany and get experience and got get hold of the best best facilities in the world. So, like like likewise, like me, any any student of CIT Kokrazar can also be a part of or apply for this scholarship or or be a visiting researchers in any part of Germany or United States. So everyone has the capability and uh, a quality and a knowledge and experience wherein you will be able to uh, uh, strive forward and be a role model for the many of the students in the region or in the state or in the country. In Japan, Although it was a short period of time, but I really had a good time uh, talking to the professors in, J in Japan and interact with the students in Japan and collaborate in research. Moving forward, in the beginning, you should plan your career. The, 
as I have already as I have already mentioned, there are a lot of opportunities and options available for a uh, B.Tech graduate or a diploma graduate, and all the options are equally good and and compete with each other. And each one of you should choose a career based on academics or personality or based on your talent or a desire. And here are the four options wherein you would be able to choose. First of all is to know yourself, where you want to be and your skill sets, resources and personalities. And then you should explore in the second, you should explore possibilities. Try to do a bit of research, try, try to find out what specialty you have in your, uh, what talent do you have in your mind or what what is that brings you always to that field be it engineering, be it football, be it uh, any other areas, then set goals, develop a plan and address the barriers. And what are the barriers if you want to reach to, towards that goal and try to resolve the barriers and then make it happen. Make it happen means plan into action, learn. And during the process of your uh, experimentation or, or during the process of your reaching goal, Try to learn things from failures because there is no shortcut to success. You'll have to experience failures, then only you'll reach towards success. And this is the reality. And ambition versus reality. Before making a career choice, take time to understand you. As I have already mentioned, ambition cannot be injected, nor it can be immediate, imitated. You cannot follow someone and uh, make your ambition. And one of the determining factor is also like parents' attitude towards shaping uh, the career and the future goal of a student. Convinced thinking and the traditional thinking. In career, you have two types of career. One is like education-based career and one is the talent-based career. In terms of uh, in terms of education-based careers, this is nothing but your professional courses where you are taking, uh, uh, where you are studying an engineering degree, then you're going for an engineering jobs or you're going for a research in engineering or you're going for a entrepreneurship or you're going for a social sector. Talent based career is nothing but uh, your talent in terms of uh, singing, dancing or football or any other extra core curricular activities or be this resembles the talent based career option. And there are fact there are very there are very there are various factors that comes into your life when you choose a career. One is your skill sets and your interest, and your motivation and your personality, your qualification, your contacts. Contact is nothing but your friends circle or your family circle, and location. Maybe location also is a major factor in choosing your career. Suppose uh, uh, urban people compared to rural areas might not be having so much of exposure to the career options in life. And as I have already mentioned, there are three types of career options after your BTEC. Probably you can go for a job in government or in private sector or else higher studies that is nothing but Amtrak or professional courses like MBA or you can be an entrepreneur yourself. And for your professional courses, for higher studies, you can go to India or abroad. In India, we have uh, many IITs and NITs, and I, there is only one IIC, by the way. So, and these are some of the top IITs and NITs and IIMs and universities. As in terms of IITs, we have IIT Bombay, Delhi, Madras, and in terms of NITs, we have NIT Suratkal, and in terms of IIMs, we have IMB, AAC, and in, in terms of university, we have JNU, University of Hyderabad, and some other uh, term. So, uh, in terms of uh, moving forward, I'll shortly go through the uh, in terms of uh, in in Germany the study opportunities in Germany and how how you you can you can be a part of uh, German education system and how you can study masters or PhD in Germany. So in this regard, Germany offers us various courses uh, for students from after graduation and 
for PhD research. Now, are you still on the train? Yeah, I just got down. I am. I'm uh, looking for a particular place. Sorry for disturbance. Right. I want to see your video now. <laughs> I tell you, very it's interesting. Okay, okay. Right now, I came out. I'm in. Uh, I'm in a station. Yeah. Take your so place. Take yeah. your place. Yeah. Take your time. I, I'm okay. giving you two, three minutes to find out a good place. Yeah. Okay. And dear participants, uh, the limit has crossed and. I'm unable to stream it live, but the videos are being recorded, so it will be shared later on. Okay, moving forward. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> Germany is one of the best place to be do research or do masters. A lot of Indians go in Can Germany. Show your video now. It, it will be exciting, Pinos. Okay, okay. <laughs> so, go to your meet. Okay, okay. And unmute. Yeah, here it is. It's crossed uh, below. Below the mic. Uh, next, next to the mic. Below. Leave it then. If you are having trouble, then leave it. no issues. No issues. No issues. You know. Well, let me show. Yeah. Uh, so just below. Uh, I think I'll continue, sir. Yeah, yeah, you'll continue. You can continue. Go ahead. Okay. okay. Uh, Germany is one of the best places to be in, and like in terms of uh, uh, job or in terms of. Uh, uh, in terms of security, in terms of opportunities, in terms of facilities, Germany is one of the best places to be in to do research and masters. And these are one of the top uh, universities in Europe. And one is University of Cambridge, University of Oxford, ETH Zurich, College Polytechnic, UCL, and Delft Polytechnic di Milano, and University of Manchester. And in term in Germany. Technical University of Munich is the top university in Germany, and in terms of global ranking, it is around 55. And in Germany, it is number one. And there are many such universities in Germany which offers master's courses in civil engineering, management, uh, electrical, electronics, communication, mechanical engineering, uh, and design and manufacturing. So, in terms of manufacturing, as you all know, that like companies like BMW, Volkswagen. Uh, uh, POSC, these companies have a foundation and ma main base in Germany. So, uh, a lot of Indians even go to work in these companies. And in terms of uh, salary and living standard, Germany is also one of the best place to be uh, in terms of living standard and in terms of uh, work life balance. So, based on my experience, uh, Germany has a very, very good uh, work culture, very like uh, in terms of family, in terms of work, work life balance is given due importance, keeping in mind the mental health and students' well being. So, in Germany, you have a flexible little system, means your masters, you have a flexible system wherein, like, if you feel like during one semester, if you feel like uh, one subject is uh, a tough for you to give in this semester, then you have a flexibility to give this sub particular subject in next semester. But in your transcript, this will not reflect as a big paper or any other type of uh, this one. So this is one of the great advantage of the students who are wishing to study in Germany. And in Germany, one best thing is that uh, German education system does not charge tuition fees, which is entirely free for students. They just just they just charge a minimum fee of twenty five thousand uh, per semester for maintenance fee. In terms of euros, uh, in terms of Indian rupees, it's around twenty five thousand. 
So per semester they will charge you only twenty five thousand. So in terms of tuition fees, German offers free uh, free tuition fees to all the international students and to the students to the Indian uh, their own students as well. I'm sorry if there is a disturbance in sound. No issues, Pinos. Continue. No issues. So basically, in Germany, uh, uh, they have a very good scholarship as well as a, a world-class university with high standard of living and engineering jobs. One best thing is that after your graduation, after your masters in Germany, you can spend for eighteen months to search a job. In terms of like like in Sweden, Sweden they offer only six months of uh, job search, but in Germany they offer eighteen months. After your graduation, you can stay in Germany for eighteen months and search a job. So once you get a job, you'll get a, a job visa to remain back in Germany and work in Germany. So uh, even after Bre exit, UK2 has opened the doors for Indian students, and now they are offering uh, uh, two years for job search if you complete masters from UK. So these are some of the latest developments that are taking place in Europe and and I am sure the students of CIT will take this opportunity to, to apply in European countries for their masters or PhD programs. And there are there are there are processes wherein like uh, Germany has specified website where you can apply for masters or PhDs with scholarships. I would like to call out the name of the uh, website. The name of the website is DAADDAT, which is nothing but DAADDAT. Uh, this DAT uh, website is the top German scholarship agency that provides scholarship to master students and PhD students. So uh, I think they offer around 2,300 uh, euros for master students and PhD students. And for master students, they offer two years. And for PhD students, they offer for uh, three to four years of your stay in Germany. So I think I'll share the link of that the website uh, with the professor. And this can be shared with all the students wherein they can uh, browse the browse the scholarship and search themselves and the application process is like uh, German universities basically have uh, uh, their own website from their own website the students can apply directly uh, with a minimal application fee and all the documents uh, should be sent to the German uh, German university themselves and the German university will screen and basically conduct an online interview or sometimes they might not conduct online interview they might uh, shortlist directly on the basis of your uh, uh, resume means your own uh, profile uh, basically on your percentages or uh, basically on your extra co-curricular activities or uh, basically on uh, on uh, experiences or job profile so germany basically requires no island language Sometimes some of the universities do accept IELTS language or a German B2 level or B1 level of German proficiency. But some of the English speaking courses uh, only requires an IELTS, IELTS courses, IELTS test result, which is one of the easiest uh, uh, test uh, if, you are, if you are already used to English language. And there are two types of application, direct and indirect, and it can be online or offline or uni assist system. There is one system by name uni assist, which provides uh, a platform for all the universities in Germany, uh, be it in terms of notification, be it in terms of branch selection, or be it in terms of scholarship. So this uni assist portal provides uh, links for various courses in Germany, and they for providing a service, this uh, uh, Indie Assist uh, charges some minimal amount from students. So students can browse this Uni Assist and get used to the platform and apply for German universities.
and uh, for application you need uh, some of the very important documents the first is your academic certificates and your passport and language requirement sometimes i said as, as mentioned earlier sometimes they require ielts test or sometimes they require german b1 level test or some of the universities don't does not take this language test language it is not mandatory to apply so resume and cover letter and the motivation letter and stand up uh, operating procedures means sop statement of purpose when in like uh, why you want to apply it in germany why this courses why not the other courses why especially this university uh, this type of uh, uh, things will be asked uh, during your uh, sop making i wanted to i want to tell the students that currently the world is moving towards fast pace within a uh, lot of challenges a lot of competition is coming forward and we as a citian should always be alert and be active and proactively take part in owning our skills uh, with the other counterparts in the country so according to the world economic forum report there are 10 emerging skills that you need to hone yourself before you move out of uh, your graduation or before you move out of any job or any any profile you're looking for in the industry or academia or in terms of uh, research so a person needs to be very strong in analytical thinking and innovation and be an active learner and learn things very fast or are uh, are a quick learner and be creative in nature and have an originality and an initiative by themselves and be and be very good in technological design and programming languages and be a critical thinker and is very good in solving problem solving questions and have the leadership and social influence and also have the emotional emotional intelligence I'm, I'm sorry, uh, Professor. You know, tell me. Can I, I? I think I forgot my mobile phone in the system. Oh. So, so should we? So, what should I do, Sino? Okay, okay, sir. I lost my mobile. Yes, sir. Have you got it or not? No, I don't know where I kept it because maybe I have kept in my this one. Train. Yeah, yeah. So I'm sorry, actually. Uh, it's a I'm mess. Sorry. <laughs> so the train has left. The train uh, di did not leave. That train is here. Okay, can you just go and check again? Yeah, I am yeah. giving you. I'm giving you five minutes break. Okay. Okay, okay, sir. Yeah. B two, B two. So, uh, dear participants, please bear with us. I'm sorry, somebody has taken maybe so. I'm just sorry, Pinos. It's okay, it's okay, sir. It's okay, no issues. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, we cannot, it is beyond our control sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyway, you can continue, no problem. Okay. Do you have extra mobile phone with you or not? I, I, I don't have right now. Okay. Hmm. But how are you managing the network? I have a Google dongle, so that's why I'm managing with that. Oh, achha, that's why. Okay, then, uh, yeah, you can continue, by the way. You can manage.
okay sorry for the disturbance and i really i'm sorry really for, like uh, because of the network issue and train delay and because of the earthquake which is beyond our control as well yeah so, yeah. <laughs> so moving wow. forward yeah moving forward i'm sorry are, yeah, yeah moving forward there are uh, uh most demand tech skills that are required for the students right now in order to move towards next level of uh, uh, high level or if you want if you want to be successful in life or if you want to success if you want to be successful in a, a tech industry or in academia or in research and this is one like basically it is an inter interdisciplinary wherein like even an electronics engineer or be it in civil engineer or be it in a mechanical engineer needs to equip themselves first is cyber security and one is a uh, second is cloud computing the third is devops and the fourth one is ai and ml based uh, so on and the fifth one is virtual reality sixth one is blockchain technology and seven one is quantum computing so these are some of the key technologies that are required the key skills that are required for an engineer to be successful in their career and in terms of technical skills requirement, uh, an engineer needs to equip themselves with programming skills like C, C++, Python, R Studio, statistical knowledge, and many other technical skills that are prominently used by industry or in terms of by researchers or by <clears throat> various uh, research and innovation uh, setups. So I would advise the undergraduate students to equip themselves with technical skills like C++, C, Python, R, and statistical knowledge. So this, uh, these technical skills can leapfrog you or can be a, uh, can lead you or to any, many, uh, many higher positions in academics or in terms of job. So in terms of industry requirements, this, these technical skills are the prominent requirements in terms of uh, to become a data scientist or data research or in terms of business, analyti business analytics or in terms of uh, data analyst. So these are some of the key requirements to be a data analyst or data scientist. So I would advise and urge the students of CIT Kokrajar to learn these skills and equip, equip yourself in your undergraduate program itself. Because when you learn now, in future, if you go for masters or if you go for an industry job, then it will come handy for you all. Because I didn't know that these technical skills are really important for me when I was pursuing my graduation. But once I reached my master level, I realized that these technical skills are a must to survive in industry or in academia. So I would request uh, the current students to equip themselves with these skills. And I'm, I'm, I'm sure and I have a sure belief that by equipping yourself with these skills, you'll reach to greater heights, be it in history, be it in research, or be it in academia. And now I'd like to take uh, questions from the students. If you have any specific questions and queries, I'll be happy to answer to your queries and questions. Thank you so much, Pinos, for your presentation. In spite of lots of uh, difficulties, you have uh, done your job. That's why you have achieved your success. I know now that, you know, whatever problem comes in your life, uh, <laughs> you can succeed anyway. That's the proof you have already shown through this presentation. Uh, so you are really great. And uh, uh, you have very nicely presented. and it, it's a really motivational, a real motivation talk, as Manasivara Madam has said. Now, students, if you have any queries, any questions, you may ask. You may send in the chat box also. Maybe you can directly ask. Please. Start. Hello. Hello. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Myself, yeah. uh, currently, ex student of CIT Kokra, sir. Uh, yes. Pursuing my M.Tech in Johar Engineering College, my question is that to Bhaiya, 
how can one get, can get admission to in ph to be in phd in isc bangalore okay there are three uh, there are three ways you are a, you are a mtech student right yes yes so uh, there are two ways to get an admission in mtech uh, in isc bangalore for a phd in research one is through mm -hmm. gate uh, okay. minimum criteria is that you, you need to qualify gate mm -hmm. and the other one is like you need to have a cgpa of 8.5 in your masters or graduation if you directly call for an interview or NTP process. So if you, in terms of these two process, if you qualify each one, if any one of them, then you will be able to, you'll be called for an interview in IAC. Okay. Is it, uh, is it clarified? Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Any, sir. any other questions? Yeah. Good afternoon. Bhaiya, uh, is it necessary to uh, learn German to study in German universities um, for masters and PhDs? That's uh, a very good question. Actually, like uh, lo a lot of students have the same doubt. Like, uh, do we need necessary to learn German language? Because Germany has uh, different levels of languages, like A1, A2, B1, B2, C1, and C2. So, in this regard, I would say, like uh, in Germany. Uh, some of the courses do require German language proficiency, and some of the courses does not require uh, German language proficiency or English language proficiency. In this regard, it depends upon university to university and research institutions to institutions. So in Germany, uh, if you're looking for an English language courses, then you would not require uh, B1 or B2 level of uh, German proficiency, but you will be told to learn German when you are in Germany. Okay, so you'll be given a courses like you'll be able, to, you'll be provided with some specific courses to learn a German in Germany when you are in Germany. Because once you are in Germany, after you complete, you will have, you will have to apply for a job in Germany. So in this regard, if you know, if you have some kind of a proficiency in Germany, German language, then a job will be very easy for you to get in Germany. So it's very easy to get job in Germany if you know German. Okay, in, it is the same with in terms of France as well. In France, you, you would have to, by any means, learn French language. Unless you learn French language in Germ uh, France, you will not be able to get a job in France. So it is, uh, to your question, so it is not mandatory that you need a uh, German proficiency language. There are some courses which also offers uh, in English language and they don't require uh, German proficiency, but you, you, your CGPA should be a very good one, like uh, at par with some of the uh, students. So they basically shortlist you based on your profile. Profile consists of your uh, CGPA, your work experience, or you have any extra co-curricular activities or your achievements. Okay, yes. is this fine? Thank you. Yes. Next, next. Uh, I actually wanted to ask your opinion that yeah, there are various sir. institutes in India that take students uh, for PhD program right after their bachelor's and master's yes. is not an obligation for them. So yes. what do you have to say? Is it better to complete the master's first and then go for PhD or we can directly go for PhD? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Right now even IAC has opened doors for integrated master's program. Like after as soon as you graduate, uh, after your bachelor's, you can directly move to PhD program in IAS even. Even IITs has opened this integrated program. So in that case, uh, if your academic credentials are all 60% above, okay? Remember, okay, this is very important because when you, because you're going for an academic research, so, and you are going to be an academician in future as well, right? So in that case, your academic credentials would be, uh, all your percentage from class 10 to your graduation should be 60% above. And in terms of IAC requirements, your uh, BTEC graduate should have a CGP of 6.8.5. Okay, then only you'll be eligible to apply for an integrated PhD program. So in that case, like it is uh, a far better option to join PhD program after BTEC because you lose your, you will have uh, you'll uh, spend enough time or you'll have a uh, 
more time to even go for postdoc in any part of the country or experience academic uh, exchanges or researches after you do your uh, graduation. So I would say that if you are willing to do PhD after your graduation, then that's a, one of the best options to, to go for. Is it all right? But just after completing the bachelor's uh, study, we might not have that uh, research experience or sphere. Oh, so okay, okay. Practice, will they uh, give us the equal opportunity? Yes, yes. I'll I'll clarify this doubt because many people might not be aware like what is research after your graduation. Because in BTEC you will be get, getting only one year to showcase your talent in research, which is very very minimum, very very at minimum level. So I would say that when you join an institute after your graduation you will be told to do a coursework for two years your coursework will be for two years okay so your coursework will be two years wherein you'll be able to take classes with master students or PhD students from other uh, from any department or a, your department so in that case during your two years of a coursework you will learn a lot of things for research so you'll be able to collaborate with your friends or your lab mates then your seniors will be able to teach you various techniques of your experimentation or modeling techniques or uh, research or how to write a paper. So in your in your coursework itself, you'll be told to take a research methodology classes and you'll be able to talk, you, your professor will tell you to write literature review papers. So in that case, uh, you will be molded and uh, you will be developed by the professor himself or by the lab himself. So in that case, I don't think there is any uh, uh, lagging behind between MTech students or integrated um, PhD students because both the students will be able to go through the same course course coursework. Uh, in, for master students, it takes two one year for coursework, but for integrated students, it takes for two years two years of coursework. So in that sense, like uh, you'll be uh, owning your research skills uh, during your two years of your coursework. So I would say like. Uh, BTEC is one of the best option and you don't need to worry about your uh, research experience because two years of your coursework will give you much needed uh, uh, research experience and uh, your technical skills knowledge. I hope it, I hope you got it right. Thank you sir. Thank you Finos. Yeah. Thank you Asrita. Uh, there is a question on, la uh, in, on the chat box from Shubham Paul. Having interacted with the MIM students at IIC, what's yes. your say on the Masters in Management offered by IIC? Okay, okay. So I belong to the same department, frankly speaking. Okay. So and I have taught the, the master students during my PhD days. So IIC offers a business analytics course. Business analytics course, Masters in Management. That Masters in Management. M management is very unique because in India you don't see masters in M management. Okay, like business schools offers MBA, masters in business administration or PGDM. So in that case, like ours is quite aligned with European style of uh, masters, and this masters is focused only on uh, those people who have graduated with engineering degrees, and it is it is not for arts or commerce. So it is only focused on engineers. Okay. This degree focuses only on engineers and they take only engineers. And one of the major criteria for uh, selection is GATE and CAT exam. These two exams uh, on GMAT, GMAT, okay? These three exams uh, IAC accepts. So Masters in Management uh, has very limited seats. It offers only 20 students uh, uh, seats. It has only 20 seats and uh, students end up joining 15 students end up joining in the course so this call co this course is uh, focused on uh, data analytics data analysis business analysis and you'll be uh, equipped with all analyzing huge amount of data from business perspective and you'll be able to learn r and python as well a bit of r and python as well so uh, in terms of placement, uh, the highest package last year was around 43 lakhs, okay, per annum. And the lowest package was around uh, 18 lakhs or 16 lakhs, okay. So you mean like it is at par with any other IMs in the country. And you know IMs charges around uh, 25 lakhs or 23 lakhs for two years of courses. 
but IAC charges around 1.5 lakhs for three years of courses. So imagine 10 times less than the IMs, even 10 or 15 times less than the uh, tuition fees of the IMs, okay? So IAC M management is one of the unique course in the country and uh, you will have a lot of opportunities after, your, after you graduate from these uh, courses. So I hope my, your queries have been clarified. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank now you, there's sir. a question. Yes, sir. Fahim. Uh, he says, where is better to take PhD course in computer science, whether it is abroad or India itself? There's better institute for PhD in CSE. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Also mention how to achieve those opportunities. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. So this is also one of the very, very good question. I think uh, every student can uh, take note of it. So if you are looking for a, a PhD in computer science and engineering, I am talking about India. Okay, in India, uh, IIT Bombay, IIC Bangalore, IIT Delhi, and IIT Kanpur is one of the best institute for computer science and engineering. Okay, these three, in, three, four institutes are offers you. Uh, enough enough quality research in India and it has a global ranking in the world as well in terms of computer research and when you were looking at uh, abroad in Germany especially in Germany uh, TU, TU Munich is the best for uh, for computer scientists computer engineers to pursue PhDs and USA also is one of the best option best country option to uh, pursue PhD research in computer science and engineering. So how can you achieve is one question. To, to get a position for a PhD program, in India, you, as you all know that you need a master's and GATE score. So to apply in any of the IITs or IIC, you need a GATE score. So this is one of the basic criteria to apply for a PhD program in computer science and engineering. And in abroad, I would, I would uh, tell you, please note that down the website. In Germany, especially in Germany, please note down the website, okay? I have already mentioned during my earlier presentation, it is DAAD, that, okay, DAAD, that, okay? This that website will give you uh, focused areas of uh, PhD scholarships, okay? In Europe, you don't do PhD without scholarship, okay? They, they don't accept PhDs without scholarship. So every PhD scholar will have a scholarship. Even in IAC, not a single student will have, a, will be without a scholarship. So everyone will get a scholarship. If you once you are admitted to IIC or IITs, in IITs sometimes they give they give us a self-funded. So, but in IIC we don't have such like such such a uh, scheme wherein like a, a full-time research scholar will have no scholarship. Only part-timers like those industry professionals can. Uh, they are not allowed to have a scholarship because uh, their 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 scholarship or their stipend is being already given by the company themselves. So, in that regard. So any student who enrolls in PhD program in Europe or IAC will be paid fully. Okay, they will have a monthly stipend for you. And in Europe, basically for PhD, uh, the honorum starts with around uh, 2,300 euros. Okay, which is a huge amount in Europe. Okay, if you convert into Indian rupee. Okay, so I hope it is clarified. Yes, Vinos, thank you. Now. Uh but I mean, ask, does that scholarship cover the living expenses as living costs were various within Germany? Yes, it covers fully whatever expenses you have. So be it living, be it insurance, be it your traveling costs and all, be it your conference costs. So it covers everything. So you'll be able to live happily in Germany with 2,300 euros, okay? Happily, you can roam even all, all the Europe with 2,300 euros based on your spare time, okay? Excellent. Thank you. So, sir, what is the best institute for pursuing PhD in ECE? Number no, two area is asking. ECE for PhD. Electronics and communication, right? Yeah, yeah. Best institute would be uh, we have a specific department in IAC and uh, electronic and communication, wherein they do focused research in VLSI, in terms of uh, uh, control theory or in terms of uh, embedded systems or in terms of uh, uh, what do you call it uh, uh, a bit of uh, I think 
microelectronics as well sometimes so we have a unit department wherein like uh, they specifically focus uh, in terms of electronics and communication department okay so i don't know about the other iits but in isc we have a specific department that offers phd in electronics and communication and and another department that uh, deals with signal processing and vlsi okay thank you so much any other queries students participants any other comments queries uh, how was your experience in private sector job in comparison uh, to doing research omar zit kumar is okay okay so it's also a very good question so i have experienced private as well as now research so private sector uh, if you are willing for an academic career in your life if you are looking for a academic career and if you really want to get some kind of a bit of experience in corporate sector then you can move to corporate sector and i have many friends who have worked 15 years 20 years in corporate sector and moved to academics for research okay so based on your experience based on my experience as well i would feel ki if you are really really looking for an academic career i don't think corporate experience is necessary okay so and if you are looking to earn your living uh, if you are really uh, looking forward to work in corporate sector and i think corporate sector you need to choose uh, companies okay the product best company or services best company then you need to decide like where you want to hone your skills and where you want to develop and move forward in the company in a corporate sector so i would say ki uh, if you have a bit of corporate experience and then move to academics because in corporate they do application based uh, and it is very 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 rigid in terms of uh, research in corporate sector you don't find uh, researchers in uh, corporate sector but right now the market has changed and like they are started hiring even uh, phd scholars okay right now from our department some of my friends have joined back a uh, corporate sector they after doing research okay because uh, in terms of money or in terms of financial this one stability i think corporate sector provides you far far better uh, honorum okay is it okay, fine thank you thank you so much any other queries quickly sir any advice for first year students ha ah, there are some first year students pinos freshers for btech btech diploma yeah okay okay the the best thing i would advise is utilize the the facilities that you have in cit and if there are no facilities in cit and try to collaborate with friends from outside institute or professors from outside institute do a constant uh, interaction with professors na like if you are trying to work uh, if you are trying to master your arts if if you want if you are trying to master your arts on computer science and engineering then try to explore uh, areas first of all select your domain if you want to work in uh, uh, networking or if you want to work in the area of uh, cyber security or network security or if you want to work in the area of computer architecture or if you, if you want to work in the area of software development then you need to first of all focus because you in the first year itself you'll get uh, some of the uh, courses in engineering as well as in management or as well as in economics as well as humanities like all the courses you will get in first year and you will be able to like uh, learn at least some kind of uh, knowledge on these subjects so once you do, once you learn in the first year and once you are uh, uh, comfortable with the subjects in the first year then try to specialize that in the second year and third year okay when you specialize in that area when you know python and r in the very first year and try to engross yourself in this uh, languages and try to move forward and learn better languages then you will definitely come out a very good product out of your uh, subject okay then you will become a specialized domain expert in that area then when you try to even go for internship don't look for government institutions for internship look for private institution for internship okay this is the reality because when i was in a graduation i didn't know all that but when i passed out from graduation and i joined companies and i realized that oh my god i had done a great mistake of not joining a private company and learning those skills now i realized 
that's why i would advise the first year students to, to now itself work on your domain specific uh, expertise and language skills knowledge be it uh, vlsi be it uh, microprocessor or be it in civil engineering be it in structural engineering be it in uh, electronics and communication try to focus on one subject that you are so much in engrossed in that you are so much interested in okay then fix that then take that uh, domain and complete your btech and during your course of your internship please don't join a government institution okay you will not get to learn anything if you, if you join bhnl or ngc or any other government institutions i don't think they will provide you much needed knowledge and skills but if you join a private company they'll make you to learn as well as work okay then that time when you know python or r then you can move to any other company anywhere you'll be handsomely paid okay as it fine excellent advice sir krishna sajeshan parambir how is the yeah there is another question from azay yadav what you observe when you study in india and germany what is the difference between oh. studying in india and studying in foreign country i wanted to i wanted to uh, tell about that because of uh, this uh, network issue and train delay issue i almost forgot that line okay thank you for reminding me actually so one of the major difference is like in germany the respect time first time and discipline if you are 2 uh, minutes 3 minutes late you will not be able to enter the seminar hall or class okay but in india like uh, i think uh, some of the professors do compromise okay and in terms of work style okay work style germans come by 8 o'clock in the morning and by 5 o'clock you will not see a single student and a professor in the lab by 5 o'clock okay this is the standard time and you will they follow that standard time and even the professors will not pressurize the student after 5 okay this is very very strictly followed in germany what i have seen and experienced okay so there is no uh, so much of uh, personal touch and personal connection likewise in india okay in terms of germany they maintain professional distance professional collaboration they, they maintain professional uh, what do you call it uh, uh, what do you call it relationship okay with student not like in india sometimes it turns turns into personal or sometimes it turns into some kind of things but in germany they maintain very strictly professionally suppose uh, if you go uh, after 5 o'clock in the lab from the lab then if someone notices you ki you went late in lab your professor will immediately inform ki please don't do that next time onwards don't repeat the mistake okay this is the situation and and uh, what do you call it uh, one is like uh, security in germany you don't see a lot of crime but in india like you see here now and then a lot of crime in india as well so even for women it's a very very safe place to be and for students and in if you go to any of the universities in germany you'll at least see three or four students of from indian origin studying masters or phd in germany okay so i would i, I would advise you people to go in germany and experience the life in germany and in summer one one thing one more mention like in summer germans don't work in summer for four months or three months they will not work they will only roam across the world okay they will they will be with the family spend time with family they from i think may june july till august from september their semester starts okay excellent thank you next there is one more question from aryan so how to apply for internships in india as well as abroad from which semester are we supposed to do the internships can you speak something about civil engineering korea and student sections program please i think in civil engineering i am not sure aware of the civil engineers uh, i think structural engineering geotechnical engineering which is one of the earthquake engineering is one of the i think uh, prominent research that is happening in iic research, iic and there are many areas where in like civil engineers are doing research so <clears throat> civil engineers uh, in terms of civil engineers like if you are looking for an internship i think you should basically look for uh, construction industries or if you are looking for academic research then you should look for professors that are working on your domain suppose if you are working in structural engineering or if you are looking for geotechnical engineering 
or earthquake engineering then try to email them ki professor i am so and so from this is institute and i am coming looking for a final year project or i am trying to learn this is skills from your lab i will be happy to uh, work under you if you can accommodate me for 3 months i'll happy to be i'll be happy to join your team and learn from your expertise and domain if you try to approach some of the professors will willingly reply, reply you and respond you if they have a position they will definitely reply you back and if they don't have position they will also reply you back is sorry we don't have a position right now but if you are willing to work without stipend you are most welcome some of the professors will definitely answer in that way so i would advise once you are in third year or you can start in second year final semester itself uh, for looking for uh, internships at least for 2 2 to 3 months and if you are in third year then if you are trying to explore uh, collaboration for your final year project also you can collaborate with the same internship agency or institutions so in order to do some this kind of collaboration i think i would be advise the students to be active in linkedin okay linkedin and follow professors give them the request friend request follow professors who are working in your domain or area and try to search their profile in internet or various uh, forums or fake papers then you will definitely create a network even if you are willing to pursue further research if you are looking for phd research also you can continue in the same professor so if your professor is uh, willing to accommodate and found you very suitable candidate then definitely the professor will uh, even accommodate for a phd program in the same department in the same domain okay thank you pinos and there is one more uh, last question i think uh, that should be the last uh, after completing btech should we directly join mtech or should we get some knowledge from phil work and then join mtech program which one is the best i would say after btech you can directly go to mtech or if you really want to work and get experience of the corporate sector you can work and then go for mtech as well but don't work so much more than 2 years you should not work actually because you lose your years also your uh, this one also so if you really want to go go for uh, mtech you can directly go after btech but if you really want to work, work, uh, get experience of corporate sector you can work maximum 3 years maximum 3 years after that if you are going for academic i think it is quite uh, uh, in academics quite uh, people uh, with gap they don't accept much people with having gap but if you are having job experience it's fine there is another interesting question from zungdao demari the final year student sir any message for to 2021 pass out batch since due to this covid 19 pandemic we missed industrial visits internship opportunities as well as campus experience in the final year will it affect our career yes uh, i think that's a very very relevant question and yes uh, definitely this covid 19 has affected not only students but even academics or research institutions or corporate sector as a final year student right now if you are not uh, if you are uh, stuck with uh, uh, internships or if you are not able to do internships or you are not able to go for a placement interview i would advise you to learn some kind of uh, programming skills on r or python and equip themselves with the help of course era or any other platforms and uh, in your home or in your place you can uh, learn from online and make use of the best time that you have and try to uh, learn new coding skills and then after you learn those old coding skills try to apply for jobs or try to apply for a mtech program or try to apply for a research program so i would advise this time to learn new skills because right now even your semesters are delayed delayed and your internships are delayed and you don't know what will happen in the next year so what i would advise immediate step is to learn these skills thank you thank you pino <laughs> so i think uh, we can finish it up uh, yes. we have already crossed one hour and pino must be hungry and he must be facing lots of difficulties i'm, I'm extremely sorry if he knows you had to lose your mobile phone i, I have sent a message if that uh, fellow who has whoever has taken your mobile phone he, if he wants to return he can call me up i have given the number okay okay so but anyway uh, yeah, you can give me your brother's number i can call him up if you are having some problem now I think uh, uh, I, father used to tell me that uh, 
after your master, uh, like what is your interest? Like I wanted to pursue research, also I want to go for a corporate job. And then he told me, why don't you study in Prov Institute in India right. or abroad? So you are an engineer and uh, there are a lot of IITs and uh, NITs in, in India wherein you can further hone your skills and pursue your studies. Because in our area, you hardly have anyone studying in NITs or IITs. And and one of my brother was also an NIT, and so I got an inspiration from himself also. So, so I decided that why not I go and take some time without losing my years. I joined corporate sector and then started applying for a PhD program in IITs and uh, IAC. I got a call from IIT Bombay as well as IIT Kharagpur as well as IIT Jandad Hanbad also. So I didn't go in a, for a final round. I didn't go to IIT Bombay. In IIT Kharagpur, I have not gone for an interview as well. So I joined IIT Dhanbad and after that, after three months, I experienced that I need a better exposure and experience, uh, weather facilities. Then I decided to apply for IIC and I got a IIC and then I was one of the luckiest person like uh, to get experience of the world, world renowned professors in IIC and the facilities. And one of the, I think to your question, I think uh, one of the best inspiration is my parents who have, uh, who have uh, like, uh, uh, given an inspiration to study forward and uh, do a research abroad or in India and I would advise even the students who are right now looking for higher studies to best utilize yourself in writing your uh, uh, studying research papers or writing your resume or writing your SOP so that whenever you apply for a PhD position in abroad you can directly uh, upload and apply directly to the professor himself. And okay. I, yeah. and I and one more thing, like I would like to motivate the students. Like he, when I was in IIC, there were many students from IITs and NITs. So all were uh, in a single uh, platform. Like they don't never ask me that I am from CIT Kokrajhar or you are from IIT, IIT Bombay or IIT Madras, because a CITN can also be an IITN. A CIT can, CITN also can be an IITN, and there is enough capabilities in our students and in from our professors itself who are teaching our subjects. We have enough knowledge to impart. They have enough knowledge to teach us, and with this knowledge only you can reach anywhere in any part of the world. And and I'm sure you will make best use of the facilities available, and. And anyone can do. If you, if I can do, why not? You all can do. You can go abroad, even far, far better than IIC. Okay, in the US or in Germany, for pursuing research or any other areas. Okay, so I don't want to take uh, much time. I just want to ask, what is your immediate goal now? Like you know, you have completed your PhD. What are you going to do immediately? So immediately, I'm uh, looking. Uh, I as of now, I have an offer for postdoc in. Uh, two countries and two research institutions. One is in Ecole Polytechnique Paris, which is one of the top uh, university in France. Okay, it is top one in France. Okay, then in uh, University of Stuttgart. So I am going to Germany for a postdoc in Stuttgart because uh, I am looking at professor's uh, profile. So I don't want to go to uh, uh, like uh, top institute wherein like professor's profile is not that up to that level. So I am looking for a professor's profile wherein I can get mass exposure and experience. And I'm used to German education system. So that's why I have chosen Germany for a postdoc. Excellent. So yeah, what uh, dream do you have to contribute to this society, our society? OK, so this is also a very relevant question. Uh, like, Likewise, last two, I think two years back, or one year back, uh, so when I was uh, at home due to lockdown, uh, we IITNs, NITNs, and some of the central universities came together and initiated some uh, very noble initiative by ourselves donating ourselves and con contributing ourselves and uh, selecting some of the top five students from each district and sponsoring their book and doing a career counseling. So these four districts, BTAD districts, we have selected five students each from each district and then sponsored their whole entire uh, books for their education, uh, for uh, even for science or arts, and we have done a house to house or in house counseling to the students as well. So, so I, I would, yeah, yeah, great. 
Yeah, I have uh, some offers for you right now, but he doesn't have money. Will you accept it? You know? Yes, uh, definitely. Definitely. If if that uh, uh, if that profile is uh, impacting the society, and yeah. that will also give me satisfaction, and that will also give me some kind of uh, experience, I would definitely, definitely go accept it. Number one. So, Money Number is one. not a money. Yeah. Number one offer. I want <laughs> you to be a permanent mentor of training and placement or uh, student affairs at CIT Corporation. Will you accept it? Sure, sure. Definitely, definitely, sir. Definitely. I will be happy to accept and mentor most of your students, like uh, of our students, my alma mater. So it will right. be a privilege for me to even mentor the alma mater students. Right. Secondly, I am getting a proposal from one of the private companies for the okay. career counseling for the uh, borrow medium and SMS medium students. They want some okay. kind of uh, speakers or motivators. Will you accept it? Yes, sure. Definitely, I'll accept it no, with no doubt. Yeah. Third, there is a research institute, uh, National Institute of Biology. I'm the secretary there. OK, sir. And we, are, we are going to start so many researches uh, in Boro language, culture, history, and science, technology, everything, economy. Will you, will you be able to support us when and wherever we need you? Sure, definitely, sir. I'll be happy to support uh, National Institute of Biology or whenever um, you require my help or any suggestions or uh, my uh, presence, then I'll be happy to assist you or help you in this regard as well. Thank you so much, Pino. So uh, you have given a very, very uh, kind of your valuable time to us. And uh, I'm, I'm very hopeful that you will achieve many more things in your life and uh, you have already shown that how you can uh, accomplish or achieve the things. Uh, today's experience itself has told you there was an earthquake, you were traveling, you never told me, you just called me up one hour before you know this webinar was going to start and uh, second thing, your mobile has been stolen but still you have been able to do this presentation uh, it shows that how we can achieve the things, how can we solve the problems. So I'm very, very grateful to you, Pinoz, and uh, wish you a very, very bright and brighter future ahead. So thank you. Thank you so much for joining with us. And Thanks looking forward to having you again. Thanks thank a lot, you. sir. Thanks a lot for giving this opportunity. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you, everyone, for joining. Yeah.